Hello and welcome to Teen Voice. I'm here with Juliana McGrain, Nora Ahmed, and Arushi Daimat. Thank you all for joining us. Hi, Sydney. <laughs> so basically what's going to happen is we're going to chat about a couple of topics. These are things that we sort of agreed on together. So hopefully they're sort of stuff that y'all are interested in, in digging into a little bit. The first thing that we were all like, yeah, I think we could, we would want to talk about that is AI. And literally right before we started rolling, Juliana, you were saying that you've been <laughs> chatting. You've been working with yeah. ChatGPT a little bit. So what's been going on for you? Okay, so I don't know. I, my dad's a writer. I, am a, I want to be a writer. And just the concept of me like growing up with something that I could just, that I could just type into and I could get like anything I wanted just out of it, just like farted out of it. So I, can I say that? Whatever. Um, <laughs> it has just been really fascinating to me as a creative. So I decided that I wanted to play around with it. So I, so whenever I get bored, I just put in the wackiest, most strange um, prompts I can put in. Like one of them was like, "Give me an, give me a impractical jokers x i Carly crossover episode <laughs> in script form," and it just gave me that and. I just think it's really interesting, I don't know, that it can just like do stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. What about you, Nora? Um, I don't have like the strongest opinions on AI just because I haven't really like uh, dug myself or like delved into that type of world so I don't want to like speak about something I don't know that much about but I do think that I guess to anything there are positive and negative so I think that they're probably like, I get the point of wanting to have fun with it, but I do think that there can definitely be some negatives to it, you know? It's like, yes, there is. You can, like, create anything, but is, you know, you don't know what that could... There could definitely be some yeah. negatives to that. But they have very strict content moderation. Like, it's, like, weirdly strict, and I understand why. Like I was like, hey, can you can you rewrite Pretty Rock Anthem, but about the stabbing of Julius Caesar? <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's like a pretty. I would like to read that. Yeah, me too. And it and instead of like actually giving me a response, it was just like we don't want to make fun of, uh, we don't want to make light of tragic events, um, as in the stabbing of Julius Caesar, which <laughs> happened like millennia ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like. It just really brings into question um, AI's ethics because, like, it won't write fan fiction for me, like, like any fan fiction at all and mm -hmm. stuff. Like, it's very finicky to work with. As a person that has like never really used AI, I'm I I kind of agree with Nora in that there's like good and there's also bad, and the bad for me is like, is it kind of stifling creativity because it can be like instead of writing your own compelling story, you're just relying on something that will just spit something out at you. But also, I do see that it's like, it seems really fun too. I like, yeah. like you showed us like a, an example before and it was really funny. Yeah, I mean, I'll say, speaking of creativity and of writing, I also like to write and I, I had this sort of like beginning of an idea for a story that I might want to write. Um, it was about, it was about a, um, a demon bounty hunter who is trying to pay rent. Um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. So I put it into chat GPT and I was like, what should happen to this demon bounty hunter? And it came out with like a perfectly reasonable plot synopsis, but it was also kind of a boring plot synopsis. I was like, yeah, like that makes sense. And so I wonder like, are artists, are writers going to start coming up with plots on chat GPT? Is that, you know, 10 years from now, are we going to have all of the ideas or a lot of the ideas generated by a robot, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, I, um, I think I mentioned this earlier, either off camera or on camera, where I tried to like get two very different franchises, Impractical Jokers and iCarly, to make a crossover episode. And like, I put it into ChatGPT, and it just gave me like a very boring, safe episode where nothing happens. Nothing like happens at all. There's no character. There's no real character interactions. There's no stakes. It's a very. It was very boring to read, other than the sheer absurdity of these two. We do like, love absurdity. Yeah, <laughs> the sheer absurdity of these two combine it. Of these two franchises combining, 
there is nothing that would really make me as a creative want to like produce this script that a computer came up with. I also feel like something that has come up with these chat GPT and other sort of like AI models is, is factual concerns because the, these models are sort of predictive. They're not necessarily informational, but I don't know that people necessarily know to check that. So I wonder if you all have concerns, like if you try to go to AI for, I don't know, for factual information, if you've ever thought about that or if, if that's something that's, that's come up for you. I know that I've seen like the screenshots online of like people, uh, the new like Bing search engine or whatever with the yeah. um, uh, thing, but it, it, it was like just saying the wrong information and like the wrong answers to a question and I thought that was so silly. So really I'm just, I think this whole like AI buzz that's going on like nowadays, I feel like at some point it has to fizzle out. Cause I, don't, I just don't think the whole idea of what's going on is very sustainable because mm -hmm. it's like, as you said, the scripts might be like, uh, the, the AI is creating might be kind of interesting, but it also, like as, as a concept, they might be interesting, but like, as you said, it was just boring. It was mm -hmm. just boring and not exciting. So going on. I don't think we're going to really be using it that often. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of Web 3.0 things just fizzle out into mm -hmm. fads, like cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and now AI, like metaverse AI. Yeah. Like all of those have been fads that companies are like way too quick to jump on. And if there's one thing we've learned from the dot com bubble is that like internet things don't last forever. Like yeah. the internet is a very weird and very varied place and you're not like one trend isn't just going to stay forever because especially when companies um capitalize on a trend that's when it like starts to lose its relevance like remember the silence brand thing <laughs> on twitter no tell us about it i don't know about that oh okay so it's like this um you know how brands on twitter are trying to be like Pick your bread, Bay, or whatever. Like that's, Hip it in with the kids. Yeah. Sure, like, okay. Like, Trying to be relatable like, brands or whatever. Or, okay. I don't know if you were on Tumblr, but like the Denny's Tumblr account. <laughs> that was fantastic, yeah. actually. So a lot of brands saw that and they were like, oh, they, they're getting in with the kids. So they did that, but with on Twitter okay. and stuff. And, and like the Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's like Wendy's Twitter, Twitter or whatever. And then people just like started getting sick of it. So they would like get this one image of a crab with laser eyes and just like <laughs> silence brand okay okay so what you mean yeah so it gets a little bit like once the brands get a hold of it it kind of loses <laughs> its yeah it's natural energy yeah um sorry we went but, off here we're not we went off your actual topic of like the the um no it's information it's, natu stuff. it's natural discussion yeah, yeah. this okay. is this is what a conversation is yeah um but nora i do want to talk to you about oh. um <laughs> Pope in a jacket? <laughs> um, because Why me? <laughs> did you see this image? Probably. So, oh, yes, Pope, big yeah, white jacket. I, yeah, I saw it like two days ago. Yes. Yeah. Did you think that it was real? No. I thought it was real. I was, oh. I was completely fooled. So if you're, if you're not aware, there was an image that went viral, mostly on Twitter, but like kind of everywhere this week. I saw it on Instagram. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was the Pope in like an incredible like puffy white jacket. Really good. I thought like, it was like designer. So stylish. Like imagine like hype bees. Like yes. with like the big cross. And, like like the very fur. for yeah. like two seconds I thought it was real, but then I like clicked on it and I went to the comments and it was like, this is a deep fate. Well I mean AI. I mean ooh. But it's oh, it was convincing. So it was convincing. I don't know. Do you Nora, do you, what do you do you have thoughts or concerns about this idea that you could see an image on the internet but it never happened yeah i think it's kind of i don't think it's the best thing in the world obviously because like people do fall for it and one day like it's it's gonna like like it's gonna go too far to the point where somebody like something i think really bad is gonna or like some image that like is made by ai and should be taken seriously and like people will because obviously it's like something serious but it's since it's ai it's not real and I feel like it's one of those things where we won't really know the like know the negatives until like we have to face the consequences. Yeah, of, and but, didn't that partially happen with like the the Trump yeah. arrest yeah. images? But okay, I while you guys were talking, this got me thinking. Like, who is at fault? Like, if if someone is to type in like 
blah 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 or like something controversial into an AI and then they make it who's at fault here is it the creator or is it the AI like like we brought up the example of the uh, twitch controversy with um, AI oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and like I don't know. Yeah, I think it's the person who's, like, searching it up who's yeah. at fault. No. Also, partially, at least in the Atriot case, definitely the person that made the, the deepfake, mm -hmm. um, like, thing in the beginning. Um, but also, like, the person searching it up is, is also at fault. So, just to explain a little yeah. bit about what we're talking about, this was an instance where um, a Twitch, Twitch streamer was sort of AI image generated into a pretty risky situation that she herself was never in yeah and that's something that can happen now yeah so you're saying in your mind there's some liability or some responsibility for people who are looking at those images yeah not only well the people no who are it's not that things. it's the people like is it the people who are making them or is it the ai because you know how um like i saw my art teacher was talking about this the other day how um a like some guy submitted an AI work to the art con to an art contest we were thinking about doing, and then he won, and um, the money went to him. But I like someone in my class argued that it should have gone to the AI because they were the one who created that work. They were the one who created that piece. The actual physical, tangible person who made it like just typed in whatever. Yeah. So you're saying there's some. Um question about ownership that's raised yeah. by AI if you create an image. But also in the case of like the Atriox uh, situation, it was like a website where you would like, uh, where you would physically put in the streamer's name or like a, a, a famous person's name and then uh, somebody else would like deep fake their face onto, you know, this sort of content. Um, and so, it, I don't know. It's, no, I mean, it's, it's really weird. interesting. It is. I think, you know, we've always had the capacity for problematic actions for, mm -hmm. you know, there's always been elements in our society that we wish we wouldn't have to deal with, but we do a lot of the times. And I think this technology puts that in a new context where the boundary between truth and falsity is a lot mm -hmm. thinner. And like, you know, the Pope in a jacket is a pretty harmless, pretty funny example of it. But it seems like there are real ways that this could create real risk for real people. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think you, you mentioned, I forget who mentioned, the, the images of Trump being arrested. Yeah, yeah. One thing that I'm really interested in there is this idea that, you know, our former president is someone who can pretty easily wrestle up a protest, could get people to show up somewhere. And if we can have images that, you know, look real but never happened, I don't know, does that, does that put us at risk in a different way as a society? Okay, that's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, big ideas, big ideas. I mean, I think it all depends, I guess. I mean, like, like, I would say, yeah. Like, I don't know. I, there's always the argument about, like, doctored screenshots and stuff. But when it's, like, a photo, you really have to have, like, critical thinking skills and media literacy skills to be able to de decipher, like, is this a real tangible photo and then you have to like fact check the sources which is probably more than the average person is willing to do but when it's something big like a former president getting arrested um you have to like you have to check your sources man <laughs> like do you think that i mean you guys are in high school you're in the in the position of learning about how to be responsible citizens how to check your facts how to check your sources do you think that we're doing a good enough job to prepare you for a world where images and voices can be can be faked? Is there something that you wish we were doing that we're not, maybe? I, I don't think well, I've ever I had, like, a media literacy course. Well, in right. really no, like, like school. Like, you've been to, like, an English class and a history class, and those, like, teach you media literacy skills. Oh, wait, no, no, no. We did, we did do, like, a, a thing about that in eighth grade. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Like, um, yeah, I, I like, think that the it? tech... It was, um, it was, like... Uh, when you have, whenever you like get like a an article, you have to like check where it comes from and check that it's like uh, credible. Oh wait, was that in health class? Was that in ninth grade no, that health was class? In... We we did like multiple yeah, things. We, Never mind. Done. Yeah. Sorry guys. But, um... <laughs> oh 
Oh my god, you. I think that the technology of AI and deepfakes is way too new to like be able to implement it meaningfully into a curriculum because like I know like when I was in middle school and elementary school, that was when cyberbullying was really starting to like ramp up and they just kind of haphazardly like curveball threw it into the um, <laughs> curriculums and it was really displayed in a way that wasn't accurate to my experiences. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never truly been cyberbullied, but like, I've never had anyone on my post to spray like nasty, terrible things, like, or like catfish. It's a little them. more subtle, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's more subtle. Like, it's things like that. Issues like this aren't always so black and white, especially when they're on the internet. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, you know, it's, it's occurred to me, and I don't know that much about the technology to know if this is possible or not, but like, what if, what if there was a way to put like a watermark on any AI generated image so that it's like, you can make whatever you want. You can go on these image generators and like, you know, create a picture of a Twitch streamer doing something she never did, but it, yeah. it shows that this is legally, there has to be some sort of like, yeah, I don't know if that's realistic, but I mean, it might be, I can see a world where that happens, but I feel like a lot of the appeal of these like fake news articles or fake um, photos and videos is that they're giving the illusion that something is true for either like profit or radicalization and stuff. And so they wouldn't have the watermark or they'd figure out some way to work around the watermark so that the image can be like, more believable. But I yeah. do feel like in these like newer times, like legislators should take these new concepts into uh, account and instead of, I don't know, persecuting some group of people, you should maybe try to actually focus on issues that are happening right now and maybe try to prevent this sort of exploitation going on of like, uh, like the deep fakes and stuff and try to like, you know, make it a illegal. Yeah, like <laughs> I remember um, when I was in the fourth grade, like 2018, my sister and I, we would like hide under the covers and watch Shane Dawson videos, I know, <laughs> like his con old conspiracy theory videos, and he would talk a lot about AI and deepfakes. And that was something at the time that I was just re remember thinking was so cartoonishly out of sight, like, but now like it's starting to become more and more of a reality and stuff. And I don't know, it just like scares me because, you know, People are going to use this to create like false agendas, whether it's about like a random celebrity or a B-list influencer or a politician. Like it could cause genuine harm. I think one of the things that's really interesting to me is that the things that are the most believable to us are the things that confirm our pre-existing world view, right? You know, I think, I'm sorry to keep harping on Pope in a jacket, but like, I want to live in a world where the Pope looks that cool. Um, so I was like fully prepared to believe that, that that was a real image, even though, you know, if you look at it, his hand looks wonky, you know, there's, yeah. there's stuff that gives it away, but I wanted to believe. And I think that that concept could have really you know, there are, there are a lot of people who believe a lot of wacky things that, you know, are, are looking to have their worldview confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, I think we talked a lot about AI. Yeah. On that positive note. <laughs> on that very well, cheery. On that, on that note, I think we should, like, talk a bit about representation in media, because that was one of the... Yeah. And I think, and we're all, like, or at least I know you two are, like, we're all, you know, some sort of... Like queer or wait, uh, can we cut that? <laughs> I think I think we here at this table, all of us have different and interesting life experiences mm -hmm. that are different from maybe the mainstream norm in a different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah, you guys wanted to talk about representation in media, and I'm really curious to hear what is on your all's mind. Class want to share? <laughs> okay. Can I go first? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have kind of had like a, a come to Jesus moment, but Hindu version. Um, and I have been like kind of exploring or kind of coming to terms with my own identity as a, an Indian girl uh, who lives in America and has like always like been in American culture and uh, up till this point I've kind of uh, been just been like skirting through life kind of trying to avoid like 
being Indian as much as possible, and I think I kind of know why. And it's because the only Indian representation that I have is either the most like stereotypical, like geeky Indian kid that loves like learning and is constantly picked on. I'm only talking about Baljeet from Phineas and Ferb here. And Ravi. Fully not gonna and and Ravi from the Jesse. Jesse. Um, either that or like the full opposite where it's like an Indian person who hates being Indian and they want to reject all like mm -hmm. all traces of that and they they're gonna fall in love with the white and I'm only talking about Mindy Kaling right now <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. that's that's fully it and I, I, I've kind of been in between these two things and now I've kind of realized that like or I've, I've kind of been more on this side where it's like okay I I am gonna try to be not Indian as possible. I'm gonna pretend that I'm not smart. I'm gonna pretend that uh, I don't like learning this language or I don't like being in touch with my culture. Uh, but now I've kind of realized it's super fun. And now that I've uh, seen like more people in media where they're like me and that being Indian is just like, a thing that happens, you know, I was watching uh, the, I'm just talking a lot, but I was watching like the new like Shira reboot and uh, one of the characters, she's like, uh, she's, they see coded, um, she's not really, yeah, she's not really explicitly said to be they see, but she has, you know, darker skin, she uh, wears like uh, Saudi style dresses um, and she's just kind of Indian while also having like aspirations and dreams and loves and, it, and all that kind of stuff and I'm like wow I can just like wearing my cultural heritage but also just be a normal person I don't know yeah, That's my preach. I mean, like, I've never really, as a white woman in America, <laughs> I've never really struggled with seeing, like, people who look like me represented, but I always have kind of, like, struggled with people, like, who are queer and who identify as being queer in the way that I do, because I'm not really a huge fan of labels, but I know I like more than one gender. And I feel like whenever I see, um, like, that type of being type of person being represented, it's always like very like tumblery stereotypes, if you know what I mean. Like it just doesn't feel very accurate to who I am. And I'm not saying that every character that has like the same identity that as I do has to be just like me. But like it just feels a little hmm. something to be desired maybe. Yeah, something like not every bisexual person is like like Whereas Doc Martens and has a shape and has like <laughs> half their head shaved and you know like, like like some of the people are just like dudes you know who just kind of hang out. Mm -hmm. Does this come up for you, Nora? Um, in your personal experience or just what you've observed doesn't mm -hmm. have to be anything in particular. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think. I mean. In a way, yes, I kind of agree with Arushi and, and, and like, you know, we're like, I mean, I kind of just wish we could live in a world where like representation of multiple different types of people is them just like living their life. Like I, I feel like a lot of times when groups who aren't represented um, as much when they finally are, it's kind of like what makes them not representative, representative if that makes sense, like that's kind of what their whole identity is surrounded by and like that's what the whole plot is about where in a way like I kind of wish you could just exist and like to me that's kind of like not true representation but just representation that I really want to see and uh, simply just existing and living just normal lives the same as like white people, um, straight people, cisgendered people get to live, you know, stuff like that, so. Yeah, I really like that, this idea that maybe when we've had media for so long that's been pretty unrepresentative of what society really looks like, when you get one thing, that becomes the only image that's out there. But as we develop more, as we have the opportunity, as different groups of people have the opportunity to tell their own stories, 
more, we could have more different kinds of stories and people could just exist more. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. And like, um, I don't, like, I just think that this might be an interesting talking point. How like, so you know how there's a new remake of The Little Mermaid with Halle Berry? Uh, that's her name, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wait, was it, is it Halle Haley Berry? Berry? Is it? Haley Berry? Is it? No, because sure. Halle Berry is someone else, right? It's not, anyway, we okay. know what you mean. Whatever. Yeah. Um, one of the girls from Chloe, Chloe and ha- Halle. I, <laughs> Um, but I know that she's being aerial, and I know that um, people further to the right are all up in arms saying that like it's ruining the story and that like uh, blah blah blah, it's like taking away, and that they're gonna that Disney's going woke, guys, it's <laughs> going woke, and it's just like people um, people who look different than me, and or, you know whatever yeah. should be able to exist and be in stories without like their race or ethnicity. Eth- ethnicity or gender or sexuality or whatever marginalization shouldn't be tokenized it should just be like a thing that exists which is something that we're all saying right now yeah. and also so the she, control I, room has to say that it's it's Haley Bailey Haley Bailey Haley Bailey. Bailey. Bailey oh that's a cute name though yeah that's cute <laughs> but um I also or she kind of on what you were saying I saw this TikTok that was like um of the this girl who was Indian and then the other girl who was Chinese and they were like they're talking about how people like white men, like specifically very like exoticize and fetishize them and stuff. And they were like, it's not like we're a dying breed. We're the most <laughs> like ever like if you one point three million people. Yeah, like <laughs> so we've or covered a lot of ground. Billion here. people with a B. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> uh, we've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about politics. We've talked about AI. We've talked about representation. I think that we've covered plenty of ground. Yes. Would you all be okay if we start to wrap up? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you all very much for joining me. Uh, this has been really lovely, and hopefully we can uh, keep doing more Teen Voice. Thanks, y'all. Anytime. You're welcome. It was fun.